give it another, more ferocious. Kick. Wait, critical failure? The door still does not move. Demolish the place. I don't see how this is going to give new results. There must be another way in there. Through the kitchen door, perhaps. Let's explore rather than destroy. Uh, wait, is it physical instrument? Oh, I can't the level same, that skill up small, anymore. Heavy door. I can't. I can't level it up. The same small heavy door. No lock in oh sight. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. You... I want to know what's behind that door. The same small heavy door. Oh, from no lock in sight. Ah. Uh. And you can't, I can't open the sc the menu screen during the, the kick animation. I have to watch the, the fail. The same small heavy door. No Bro, lock this door sight. is made of fucking spell breakers. It's indestructible. Try F9 for quick load. Oh my god. F9 the does same things. Small heavy door. No lock inside. Doesn't work during this though. Noxy montage and coming door walls fails. No one wants to watch a montage of this. The same small heavy door. No lock. Are you serious? Inside. Come on. Come on. At this point, mathematically, you should give me this. That's how math works. The same small heavy door. No lock. You inside. suck. This should be a one in four chance, and that was like seven attempts. The same small heavy door, no lock in sight. Oh my god, you're bad at math. Hold on a sec. The same small. Twenty-eight. Heavy yeah, door. that's like one in four. No lock in sight. First try. This time, something cracks inside. It is an unbelievably satisfying sound. Don't tell the guy that owns this place. Nice. My morale is healed. Filling you with a belief in your own body. Well, sounds like this time the property damage was at least resultive. We did hurt to look in. Let's see. You clearly see footprints in the downy carpet of dust covering the workshop floor. Jackpot. These, and like everything else here, are new. Someone's been here within the last week or two. Three weeks maximum, from the dust coverage. It could easily have been one week, too. You know, officer. He looks at you. This is good. He likes it. There's a little smile there, in the dark of the workshop. It was a stereo investigation, after all. It has now converged with our main investigation, adding a new fact to consider. Okay, what does this mean? It means someone snuck through what seemed like a secret route, leading to the roof, from where you can shoot our victim. This is significant. Continue. This prince, officer, could be the prince of our killer. Let's have a closer look then. Crouch and study the footprints. Large prints, most likely made by boots. The size is hard to determine. Soul could be bigger than vamp. The souls have left a pattern, uniform, horizontal lines. This doesn't look like the odd sold print we found at the hanging, Kim. The size looks about the same, actually. They're not the same shoe, but they could be the same person. It doesn't look like the worker's boots from the hanging, does it? No. These little horizontal lines are different. They look custom made to me. Or some kind of foreign print. Hard to say. Still a boot, though. All right, get up. Everything around you is quiet. The prints crisscross the workshop floor. Let's move on. Plus empathy and hand-eye coordination. Pinball maker's coat. Schematics for a pinball machine? Futurism themed. The pinball machine has been taken apart and gutted. There's a tiny hole in the wall. You see a bedroom on the other side. 
bro, someone was watching her and that other dude get it on. You can almost see the shape of a man and a woman writhing inside, bathed in drug sweat and dirty linens. Bottles lie around everywhere. I think I can see into Klazi's bedroom from here. You can barely see through. Better not to jump to sensationalist conclusions. The footprints on the floor, however, definitely suspicious. Continue. Boring footprints. I want to jump to sensationalist conclusions. Finish thought. Boxes of tools and replacement parts line the shelves. Small windows taped shut with black plastic. You can't see outside. This pinball is white Deora. The back glass shows a female figure in mourning. A note, NB. The spare key is tied to the bush outside the corner room window. Oh my gosh. Sublime! It is sublime. The Over there, window. in the corner. The pinball machine? Not just any pinball machine. This is the pinnacle of pinball. Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats. It's lit. You can't wait to get your hands on it. Kim, are you seeing what I'm seeing? The pinball machine. Gordy's Goats. A classic. You've played it? A little. Feels like a lot. Too much to play it again. Let's take a look. Pull out the machine. Ah, oh, great. The lieutenant sighs. Cornelius Gordy and the mountain goats reads the golden lettering on top of the back box. There's a small column of text underneath. The machine is coin operated. Get the game on, finger boy. Those flippers are ready. Lean closer to read the text. Above the painting of a moustached man climbing a hill, a column reads, inspired by the legend of Cornelius Gordy, taken on the world's tallest peak, Corpus Windy. The Mesk legend holds that when the nation is in danger, heroic Gordy shall return and save his people. Inspect the playing field. The theme of the game is to explore Gordy's climb through the perspective of goats and to ascend to the top of the mountain in a time of trouble. The peak of the mountain is at the top of the playfield. All the balls have small goat icons on them and represent the goats as they race up and down the mountain. Areas around the playfield represent Gordy's climb, places he was said to have camped, which the goats can discover. Get them to the summit. What's with the goats? Indeed. Think of them as balls. All right, I will spend one coin on this. Insert a coin. It takes a while to get into a rhythm, but pretty soon you're able to keep three goat-faced balls in play with relative ease. Go, go, finger boy. I feel sorry for the goats. If they only knew the kind of guy old Cornelius really was. I'm pretty good at this. Your game is definitely improving. The jolly goats are flying all over the board. And although a few plummet to their deaths, you're never left with less than three. Suddenly, a special passage leading to the summit slides open at the top of the board. This is where the balls need to go. Concentrate and aim for the narrow passage. Maneuvering a goat ball into a position for a perfect hit isn't easy. More fall to their deaths. But finally, the opportunity presents itself. I'm surprised One it's not doing interfacing dice rolls. The words pale rupture light up on the speaker panel and the machine starts filling with a thick, milky fog. Something's happening. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. When we were talking to the Hardy Boys, the fat one we, uh, said that, um, what's her name? Ruby was working on a pale something. Congratulations. This is where the game ends. It's a cheap way of getting more money out of the players. A stupid nihilistic finale. There's so much fog, you can barely see anything. Some is actually leaking out of the machine, and one by one, your goats start slipping, disappearing into the milky nothingness. This can be navigated. The balls leave almost imperceptible disruptions in the fog. Use them to calculate where they hit next. You're down to your last goat, going mostly by sound. Eyes are useless at this point, but that goat is something special. Five times you snatch him back from the jaws of death. 
reaction speed one. Kim, it can be done. Just watch. I am. I've seen it before. Played it too. You will eventually make a mistake, and then it's all over. Reaction speed legendary 3%. Stay on the ball! Ow, oh, if you can't even see it. Aww. The last goat plummets into the fog with almost suicidal glee. Aww. There goes nothing, finger boy. Finger boy. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. This door is connected to the one upstairs, but how do we get through? There must be a key somewhere. Probably somewhere in the whirling. It's not too important. We can get in and out using the roof door. There was a, a thing here about a key just a minute ago. Wait, it said like, buy a bush by the corner room This or small elevator is dimly lit by a bulb that's been glowing for ages. The latticed cage is open, inviting you to step inside. Vandal says, uh, I started playing Divinity Original Sin after hearing you talk about it. The first one? I really wish there was an earlier place in the game to respec. The game throws so much at you up front that by the time I figured out the system, it felt too late to start over with how I wanted to build. Is this game uh, any better about that? This one? I don't know if this game has respecking at all. Smells of nougat and sweat. Your head brushes up against the ceiling. There is a control panel to your right, and just enough room for two people to fit in. The maintenance card under the control panel reads, Last Maintenance, 10th July, 88. This elevator must have been used to transport pinball machines to and from the upstairs workshop. It says last maintenance was an 88. That it does. I say, let's brave it. Uh, that was a long time ago. At the end of the last century. Look on the bright side. If it fails, we will only sustain minor injuries. I'm talking three, maybe four months in the hospital. Maximum five. It appears this whole enthusiasm is sarcastic. It looks like it was mostly pinball machines riding this elevator. Seems so, although it's pretty quaint for a freight elevator. He taps on the guttering light bulb. It's golden in the dark. Look at the elevator controls. There are large rectangular buttons. Monte, the sound and an international call for emergency assistance. That third one appears to be broken. A small steel plaque reads Halter 800. Halter is a Koningsteiner lift company who went out of business a long, long time ago. Close the doors and go up. Okay. Oh. So this is where they brought 40 pinball machines to fix them up a long time ago. Everything is covered with dust now. The lieutenant looks around the dusty, crowded room, inspecting the tools on the shelf. This used to be a pinball workshop. Looks like it. I'm guessing Martinez North 22 used to be a pinball arcade before it became a hostel. There are machines left over. He taps his foot. A creak. Some dust falls off a shelf. Downstairs in the hall, next to the main door. One of them even works. I've seen one of the hardest bang away at it. Whirling in Rags was once the East Delta Pinball Arcade. This is all left over from that. Ah, yes. As the novelty dice maker said, this has absolutely nothing to do with the case, I'm sure. But I do like a nice little connection. But then it went bankrupt. Your skin crawls from making the connection. Could this mean the Whirling in Rags really is part of the doomed commercial area? If that's true, then our cafeteria manager is not going to like it. We should tell him what we found up here, omitting that suspicion. He does not appear to be the kind of man who likes his establishment to be part of a neighborhood ghost story about bankruptcy. Stupid superstition. But still, it would be interesting to see what the cafeteria manager thinks of this. It's not a ghost story. It's a curse, and Garp ought to be made knowledgeable so he could perform counterspells. Looks like they gave up fixing the pinball machines at some point. At some point, 20 years ago, 15 maybe, before pinball went out of vogue. Finish thought. Okay, so originally came here to see what new stuff she said. I was just thinking, what a nice day for questions pertaining to a murder investigation. I found your buoy. It was empty, just seawater. Oh. Did you take the documents? No, of course not. 
As I said, it would have been too risky for me to use those documents anyway. My employer gave them to me. In truth, I should have destroyed them. Perhaps the people who were after you took that? They couldn't know where I put it. I'm absolutely sure I was not followed. And I've told no one but you. You mentioned seawater? I was worried I'd been too careless with the latch. The documents were probably just washed away. This is a weird line. Why do I feel like you've won here? I really don't know, sir. I certainly don't feel like I've won. I feel like shit, sir. All the time. She smiles. A bitter little smile. She means it. But this turned out well for you. You slipped past all suspicions. Clearly, I haven't. We're having this conversation, aren't we? How well could it have gone, I mean? She looks around. The snow falls on her shoulders, then melts in her light blonde hair, cold and soft. I'm stuck in Martinez just like all of us. I've been up here for... I don't know how long now. I like to call this my rooftop containment facility. The dried flowers on the roof. Could Ruby have left them? They don't fit with anything. The what? Oh, those ones. I don't know, sir. I said I have no idea what to make of them. Honestly, I think they're just trash. I mean, there's no reason for me to think they're somehow connected to her. Something seems off with this theory I've developed about Ruby. I don't know what to say. It all seems fortuitous for you. None of this is fortuitous for me. What do you contain for them? For my sins, of course. The long-standing sins of a bad, frivolous person. For destroying my first love. For working for bad people. The list goes on and on. It all turned out well enough for you. You somehow managed to not become a suspect. Did I? Why do I still feel suspicion hanging over me then? What I managed was to get him killed. I understand that. The lieutenant looks away, over the railing. He feels uncomfortable with this conversation. He doesn't know what to add. That's it then, I guess. She nods, slowly, carefully even. There is suddenly a strange glint in her eyes. Not malicious, but dangerous. Let's return to this later. Okay. Uh, go down there. Okay, what did that thing say about the keys earlier? They were like in a bush? And if they're even still there, God knows how many years they've been out there. They were supposed to tell Gart about the thing. A woman's hand wrote yesterday's menu. Today starts in a man's handwriting. Ah, smallest church in Saint-Saëns, right? Uh, the cafeteria manager is waiting for you to acknowledge that he recognized the song. <laughs> oh, this is about the karaoke. Told you I'd rock that shit. It was all right. Subdued. I might start letting people up there again. Now, what can I do for you? Guard, I saw another thing at the whirling. Another thing? Great. I love those. Guard, what if I told you I got into the back room behind the blue steel door? Oh, okay. Well, I did hear you make noise back there, so good for you. It takes a lot of willpower not to ask. Obviously, he's been wanting to know what's behind the door. Aren't you going to ask me what's back there? Okay, what is back there? Pinball machines. A pinball workshop. Ha! I knew it. I've always wondered where those machines by the door came from. And they told me there was some kind of pinball thing here, too. I knew it. Were there any back there? In working order, I mean. Why, do you want to play? Because I might be up for a game. No, I was just wondering if you found pinball machines there. Uh, thinking of turning this place back into a pinball arcade? No, but we could diversify the entertainment options, seeing as you've opened the door back there. Well, the machine we have in the corner now is broken. It wouldn't hurt to get a little life in here, other than the hellish karaoke machine. That one's always causing trouble. Yeah, those numbers he's adding up must be making good sense to him right now. Sounds like he cares about the place. He's not going to be overjoyed to hear that it's part of the doomed commercial area. 
He should still know. You have to be forewarned about these things. Uh, there's a peephole in the wall. What wall? Upstairs in the secret back room, right next to Clasby's bedroom. I found it when I found the pinball machines. I'll have it fixed at once. Thank you for letting me know. I assure you, the Whirling does not abide spying on its guests. What a shame to fix such a good peephole. All right, you've been notified. Thank you. I'll patch it up personally. Was there something else about the establishment? I hope not. Hmm, so Clasby in room three nicked the phone line. Why? No, fuck it. I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know why these degenerates do what they do. I thought we had one good guest in the building. He really doesn't like it being classier. Uh, yeah, but Lena. Lena's a good customer. Yeah, well, she's not a guest, is she? What? Did someone mention my name? Uh, we were just paying you a compliment. And finding out her degenerate from room three nicked the phone line. Everything is okay here. He yells and turns to you. Good thing that guest pays for her stuff on time. I'll forward her the bill and be done with it. Was there anything else? So I gotta warn you, I may have discovered that the Whirling is part of the doomed commercial area. What? Why would you say that? We're at a completely different address from that whole thing. The Whirling is listed on the intercom outside as one of the businesses in building B. You should get your wiring fixed. I tried to call and I couldn't reach you. I've been working here for a long time, and that intercom has never been used by the Whirling. Uh... The Whirling was once the East Delta Pinball Arcade, which failed. Although perhaps the Whirling will escape the curse. Does this look like part of a doomed commercial area? This pre-revolutionary tile work? These high ceilings? The nice rooms? Well, most of them. For 14 years, man. That's how long I've worked here. I've kept this place up through hail and through sleet. Fuck me. Some doom ghost. <laughs> he steadies his voice. He's done a fine job, too. Though he's spoken of the place dismissively before, the hostel is actually very important to him. Who owns this place? Some real estate management company. They never come around here, just collect money from afar. Honestly, I think some money laundering might be involved. Who named it Whirling and Rags? Well, it sure as hell wasn't the real estate company. It was you? You look surprised. What? It's a great name, I know. Cafeteria managers come up with great names too. It's from a song. A song? Hail Holy Queen by the Ateniers. Hail Holy Queen of the Sea. You're Whirling and Rags. You're vast and you're sad. Good pick. You really care about the Whirling, huh? Yeah. It, it's slowly growing on me again. It's beautiful in its own way, especially for this neighborhood. I've been trying to keep it that way, even if it is part of the damn doomed commercial area. Ah, you shouldn't be so worried about the label, you know. I don't place much stock in the curse and so on, but the label frightens the clientele. Who wants to stay at a doomed hostel? Everything's doomed enough without that. What about those other cafeterias you manage? What about them? One is a basement dive frequented by chain-smoking communists. Communists? I can't tell you how sick I am of Kras Mazov and Ignis Nielsen and all those old ghosts. You're guessing there aren't that many others. Well, good luck to you with this place. Luck has got nothing to do with it. I need to think about where I'm going to place those pinballs. I have a feeling they're going to help. Against the doom, it's implied. So, if you didn't have anything else to tell me about my establishment can we you know wrap it up yes okay i mean we haven't told him that he still can't go through the blue door hold on let me see if we can find what was the thing about those like bushes by the corner room seeing any bushes around the building. Okie dokie. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding uh, what, it, what it told me. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush oh, that covers the plaza mosaic. What kind of vehicle drove through here? Hard to say. Visual calculus. Reconstruct the movement. 
The tire tracks were left here by an unknown event that took place some days ago. It's a message written it was in the me. language of This is more damage from when I was drunk driving. So I drove up, slammed into this fence, backed up, and turned around and drove that way, and then I crashed the car into the river. Some of that rubber stuck to the tiles right in front of the whirling in rags. This is point A. The driver started there and then accelerated straight into the fence. What happened next? The driver proceeded to back out of the yard, barely stopping before hitting the adjacent building, before heading south. Must have been in a hurry. This is where I started off with my motor carriage before sinking it in the sea. No wonder the cafeteria manager seemed frustrated when he was giving us directions to the yard. Well, you did provide us with a very convenient access point to the crime scene. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Call us back in a day. Look for Ruby on the coast. Union and cryptozoology business might end when you do. Get my gun. I want to get my gun before I go do that thing. Form a committee of moralists. Determine where the shot came. Check the island. I don't... I don't know how to get to the island. Unless I can talk to the lady and get a ride over there. Missing insects. Find out the real reason the trap was empty. Local kids might know. Dead body on the boardwalk. Go to Billy Magine's apartment to deliver the bad news. Apartment building. North Martin's Forest. Okay, so we definitely got a few more things we could do. Alright, so I will save it here. We will continue with the disco next time.